my life. Can you just say thank you, Lord, for all your life? If you look back, you can always say thank you, Lord, for all the goodness of God. I was remembering, I was standing here and I was remembering the goodness of God. Many are the goodness of God. It's more than you can number. I was coming back from work many years ago from Wisconsin to Detroit. As I always used to travel. My wife was asking me this morning. And she was asking, how, how did you come this far? I said, it's a long story. As I was going to work every Monday morning, my suitcase is packed. Friday morning, I, Friday morning or Friday evening I come home. Sometimes I come home early Friday. So that certain Friday I thought I'll come home early, surprise my wife from my out of town trip coming from Wisconsin, from Madison. I took a flight to Detroit. It used to be Northwest Airlines. Up in the sky, somewhere after Lake Michigan, the pilot came on the radio and said, we have a problem. And I was thinking, I fly all the time, and I, I was wondering, what is the problem? He said, the landing gear is not, is not going to come down, so we're going to have a belly land. I thought, I travel many years. Now I'm going to surprise my wife in the hospital because when a belly land, you are safe or maybe you are not safe. But I was ready because I was not alarmed. I knew my Lord is in control. So I started praying, thinking that whatever may come, whatever may happen, the Lord is in control. And as we come to land, he made a couple circle around Detroit. He came to land and I can look down and see fire truck, ambulance, fire truck, ambulance. It's lined up on both sides, ready for to receive this plane. And as he came, the landing gear came down and we landed safe. And I was thinking the goodness of God. I mean, that's just one of the incidents. How many incidents that happened in our life? That you can just say, the car accident that you could have been dead and gone. Or some way or somehow you were in front of a car, you were crossing the street, that car almost hit you and you could have been in coma. The goodness of God, because he has a plan for you. You may be seated in the presence of God this morning. Let us thank God for the goodness of God. And they are more than you can number. Can you just open your mouth and say, thank you Lord for all the goodness. All the goodness of God. I praise and I thank God for all the goodness of God. All the goodness of God. God is so good. How many of you pray the prayer that we call the Lord's Prayer? Of course, you know, uh, there is a misunderstanding about Lord's Prayer, which one is Lord's Prayer. But we all call the Lord's Prayer that is basically in Matthew chapter 6. Or loose gospel, it's there also. Uh, loose gospel chapter 11. But mainly when we call Lord's Prayer, it's Matthew chapter 6. That Lord Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. i like to take one verse from that and uh, speak uh, something this morning. Based on that verse, I trust the Holy Spirit will lead us into a place to understand what Jesus meant by that prayer. So I'm going to ask you to turn your Bible to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verse number 11. One of the segment, one of the uh, lines, there are uh, six main uh, points there in that prayer. The first three have to do with God, and the last three have to do with uh, men. So, verse 11, Jesus Christ taught, and I'm going to read Give us this day our daily bread. Let us pray. Father, we praise you and we thank you for this word. There is no one can pray like Jesus. No one can preach like Jesus. Lord, you are the creator. You have the desire for our good. You always want us to be a successful person. Because you came to die for us. And you taught us many things. Even with this one powerful word. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord, give us this day the word that we want to hear. That you want us to hear. That we need to hear. Not we want, but what we need. Let the need be met by the anointing power of the Holy Spirit. I pray for all those who are watching. I pray that you give them their daily bread. 
We praise him and thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't want to ask you to lift your hand, but you can if you want to. How many of you pray this Lord's Prayer every day in your life? I pray. My wife and I pray in the morning. My wife and I pray in the evening. And I went to a convention in North India. It was an IPC. Uh, it is called Indian Pentecostal Church, a district convention in uh, North India. I went there. And that church, uh, in the end of the uh, service, they all stand and pray this prayer, the Lord's Prayer in the church. I was so amazed. It's not a typical thing for that kind of church to do that, but I saw that. I was so surprised. But it is the Word of God. So the Word of God is powerful. It says, give us this day our daily bread. But if you read uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter number 11, and verse number 3, you'll see something different. Luke's Gospel, chapter 11, verse number 3. Give us day by day our daily bread. I like that translation. Give us this day our daily bread is in Matthew's Gospel. In Luke's Gospel, give us day by day our daily bread. And I want you to know that verse because that kind of makes uh, us to understand in a simple way, day by day. We sometimes think, day by day, he leads us. Day by day, he walks with us. Day by day, he is blessing us. Day by day, one day at a time, we sometimes think. Day by day is what we can only look forward to. It's very important to uh, know this verse that we read, the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is teaching. And Matthew chapter 5 through chapter uh, number 8, and we, we see that Jesus Christ went upon the mountain. It's called the Sermon on the Mount. And one of the best uh, speech that I ever made, that no man can, no one can preach like Jesus. No one can teach like Jesus. And no one can love like Jesus loved. While people hate sinners, Jesus loves sinners. We want to condemn sinners. Jesus wants to save them. In fact, Jesus loves the sinners so much, he gave his life for them to save them. Jesus, God himself, took the form of a man, came to save men from their sin. That's what we understand. He loved us. He hates sin, but he loved sinners. When you do sin, it's not approved. But he loves you so much, that's why we are here this morning. Bible says you are not perished because of his mercy. They are new every morning, day by day. Day by day, he is showering his mercy upon you. That's why we are here this morning. Those who believe and accepted Jesus Christ in their life are, are saved. So only thing we have to do, I was uh, watching uh, a program yesterday, uh, uh, Jay Kumar, I think his name, is a movie star. He was saying how I came to the Lord Jesus Christ, a Malayali movie star in Kerala. Him and his wife uh, sitting in front of a, a, an interviewer and he is talking to them and he is saying how I came to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he, him and his wife, uh, they could not have any children. And uh, the, they went after doctor after doctor and uh, finally somebody said, if you pray, you'll have a child. So I was watching this. There's a, a young girl sitting with, with them, probably looked like a six or seven year old girl is sitting in, uh, in the middle of this movie star and his uh, wife. They are saying, and the wife was saying, I, if I didn't know Jesus Christ, I don't know where I would have been. The Lord saved us and we don't need anything in this world anymore other than the Lord Jesus in our life. He saved us. And he said they made connection with a lot of other movie stars. They became Christian and they connected with them. This, this happened because a pastor uh, was walking. His name is Pastor John. He was walking by the front of their house and uh, he was led by the Holy Spirit to walk in there and pray for them. When he prayed for them and he said, there's some problem in your house and you are looking for prayer. That's why I came. And they needed a prayer so they can have a child. And I, I, I tell you this morning, our Lord cares for you more than anybody in the whole world. He loves you so much. Lord Jesus, his desire is the best for those who are saved from sin. He wants you to be a successful, successful person. His plan for your future, future is to be successful in your life. That's what he wants. There is no one like Jesus. There is no one else to be worshipped like Jesus. 
There is nobody there you can compare with Jesus. His teaching, I, when I take this passage from the word of God, I, am, I, I prayed about this. I said, Lord Jesus, you taught this to us and I am taking this word of yours and trying to teach here. How powerful is your teaching? How simple I am to stand here with your powerful word. He wants your best. If totally surrendered to him, he will use you for his glory in the coming days. So if you hear him speaking to you today, surrender your life to him. He is calling you out by your name. He will provide the best for your daily need because Jesus loves you. He teaches you for a purpose. He teaches specific things for a purpose. He is teaching you to pray that prayer. Here Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray. But through this word of God, he is teaching us how to pray. Matthew chapter 6 verse 11, he is teaching us. Give us this day our daily bread. When you pray that prayer, you are surrendering your life to him. When I pray that every morning when I get up, every morning we have a family prayer. We pray this prayer. Jesus, give us this day our daily bread. Day by day, provide our need. The Lord is able Jesus do not want you to pray, give us this day our daily wants. You may have a lot of wants in your life. But he wants you to pray, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. By him saying that, he's saying he wants you to seek his face daily. When you get up in the morning, when you go to bed, seek his face. We must depend on God to provide for our daily needs. If you focus is more than your daily need, it will cause you unhappiness. The problem with many people, their expectation is so high, they get disappointed. You have a lot of wants in your life. This morning, I want to remind you, just look into the face for every day. Tomorrow, we don't know. We sing a song, I don't know about tomorrow, but the one who holds tomorrow is holding my hand. This Lord is leading you day by day. Just look for today. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus taught many lessons from the beginning of the verse through the last. And the last sentence he says that every day only you just need that daily problem. And he's ending with that in chapter 6. And he's saying in the same chapter verse 25, don't be anxious about things. When you pray to the Lord, give me this day our daily bread, or day by day, give me your bread, or day by day, you meet my need. If you pray that prayer, you will not be in, in verse 25. Verse 25 says, do not be anxious. It says, take, in King James Version, it says, take no thought. That's what, that's what it says. Anxious means double-minded person. If you, uh, if you uh, dissect and study that word anxious, it says, a double-minded person. And the book of James says that a double-minded person is unstable in all his ways. Are you unstable this morning? I hope you're not. I hope you're a stable person. You must depend on God every day for your daily needs. This is what Jesus is teaching. So don't try to expect a lot from others and don't put a lot of expectation out there. Then you will not be disappointed. So, just uh, look unto him. Lord is, is your provider. He meets all your need according to his riches in glory. Psalm 68 verse 19 says that, Blessed be the Lord who daily loadeth us with benefits. Every day a new benefit comes. Every day. And Psalm 103 says, Forget not all his benefits. He gave, gives you daily every benefit. A lot of benefit is there. Daily need and he meet your need. That is a benefit. Every day you receive benefit from the Lord. So Psalm 68 verse 19 is a very blessed word. I thank God for who loadeth me. He just is not stingy. When he give you, he loadeth you. I like that word loadeth. I mean, a lot of uh, whatever that is. A lot of vegetable. A lot of uh, dirt that my wife put it in the garden. You know, a lot means a lot. And he loads you with benefits every day. 
every day our lord is opening the windows of heaven pour his showers of blessing upon every children of god who are with expectation looking under his face your faces will not be ashamed bible says those who look unto the lord their faces were not ashamed because lord is your provider will you be satisfied and be thankful to god if he meet meet your de- uh, need daily when you pray lord give us this day our daily bread and and uh, the lord heard the prayer and he is meeting your need daily will you be thankful you will be satisfied yes or no in the old testament we read god provided their children daily bread and they were not thankful and the bible says in the epistle of first corinthians chapter 10 and when you read you don't have to read it now it says like this these things that return about the old testament believers are for our example so jesus christ is teaching them for us and what they taught them and it did not work for them they want them to pray for their daily bread and he is teaching now they want you to pray for your daily bread because jesus is the living bread bible says john's gospel chapter 6 verse 35 is that what it says uh, you don't have to put it up there but it says in there it says that he is the living he is the bread he is the i am the bread of life jesus christ is the bread of life our daily life if you look unto the lord he will satisfy your need and he will satisfy all your need Exodus chapter 16 verse 21 we see that the lord gave this believers in god israel they were traveling in the wilderness the lord provided every morning according to the family's need what happened on the 6th day they are supposed to take two days meal that's what bible teaches for the seventh day they are not supposed to do anything but some people took more than what they need and kept it what happened it became rotten but when the sixth day they took extra it didn't get rotten because god do miracle in his provision god not only provide you he do miracle i'll show you that in a few moment he will not just only meet your need daily but he will make sure that daily need he will take you through this is what i call faith life today's title is faith life number 23 and the subtitle is test of faith what is there pastor for the test of faith about the asking for give us this day our daily bread here daily bread was given to the children of god in the wilderness for israel god provided their daily bread for 40 years bible teaches exodus chapter 16 verse 35 and the children of israel did eat eat manna 40 years this daily bread was there 40 years so let me stop and take a pause for a moment and ask a question to you if god provide you the daily bread every day for rest of your life and god provide your clothing and your shoes and your shelter rest of your will you be happy this is my question this is your test of faith will you win this test will you pass the test or will you fail these people failed richardly they failed as we read exodus chapter 16 verse 35 the children of israel ate manna for 40 years not just day one day 2 day 3 day 4 first week second week the fourth week the first month the second month and the 12th month and the first year second year till the 40th year that's what bible teaches until they came to the land inhabited they did eat manna until they came unto the border of the land of canaan yet they were unhappy about their daily bread Not only we read God provided them the daily bread 
in deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 5 in english verse 4 in other languages so if you look at if you are opening your bible you will see in deuteronomy chapter 29 verse 5 or verse 4 in other languages something important is there i have led you 40 years in the wilderness your clothes are not waxen old upon you and thy shoes is not waxen old upon thy foot god not only gave them daily bread God even did a miracle for them for the 40 years their pants and their shirt and their dresses their sarees their kurta and their shoes did not get old just showing off your hand how many of you will be happy if the lord provided that 40 years and your dress you are wearing is not getting old for 40 years all the hands went up i'll show you what happened to israel even with these miracles and the daily bread they were murmuring towards moses and aaron that's what bible teach bible says every time when they were complained about their leaders they complained to god so be careful when you complain about a leader privately or publicly because you are complaining to god all the leaders are appointed by god by the way exodus chapter 16 verse 8 it says you are murmuring not against us but you are murmuring to the lord it's bad to murmuring to the lord that's what bible says every time these people murmuring to moses and aaron god said you are murmuring to us me be careful it's very important you probably will say if i was there if i were there if we were there we would not have complained that's what you would say because we would be happy in the wilderness led by moses singing songs and getting that free food every day staying in the tent and it's a good outdoor activity you would be enjoying you will say i will never complain that's what many people said about the garden of eden how about you if you were there in adam's and eve's place you would not have eaten that forbidden fruit right well, what wait till you are there you will be the first to want to go eat that fruit i heard a story my mom was telling me these two couple were traveling far country and they were tired on the way they found a big mansion they walk in there the man of the mansion invited the uh, couple in when mom was telling me the story i was listening i was so interested when mom was telling when mother's story sometimes makes sense so she was telling me the story that she always used to wake me up with by singing songs but she used to tell me stories also anyway she is no more so she said these two couple went into the house and the man of the it's a big mansion the man of the house said you can take everything in this house enjoy your life as long as you want to stay in this mansion you can stay i am going for vacation you can go to the kitchen open the fridge and get the food you want and use the best bed here and sleep but one thing you should not do is that steel cabinet there don't open that one that's the only thing you should not do they went day after day and the husband and wife say i wonder what's in the cabinet they could not resist within a month they opened i found a a rat ran out, ran out of that uh, that's all it was a mouse or a small rat it was in the cabinet that's all you get when you disobey the commandment at the end you get a rat in your hand no good for nothing what did they do they were so guilty when the man came back these people were so ashamed they are sitting there shaking their hands and heads and and the master immediately knew he goes what happened we are sorry we made a mistake we opened the cabinet and the rat ran away we could not even chase him to put it back if you were in the garden of eden you would have done the same thing so what happened to israel coming back to the story about israel deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2 and 3 and 4 this the story take a lot of time let's go look at the our subject 8 chapter 8 2 3 and 4 verse 2 and thou shalt remember all the way which the lord thy god led thee these 40 years in the wilderness listen to humble you and to prove you to know what is in your heart it's important when you are led through the wilderness when you are led through the guidance of the holy spirit sometimes he humble you 
and to test you. That is the test of faith. The prove you is to test you to know what is in your heart. When the test comes, the heart will be opened up. Whether thou would keep the commandment or not. Verse 3. And he humbled them and suffered them hunger and fed them with manna, which thou knowest not, neither did they, the father know. So when I was reading that, I was thinking, he made them hungry and yet they were eating manna. How did that, does that make sense? Let's look. That might they know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. So God wants to teach them, man does not live by bread alone, but every word that comes out of the mouth of God. That will fill you also. Verse 4, your raiment wax not old upon you, neither your foot swell these 40 years. I was thinking, man, the, all the walk they walked, they had no knee pain. They had no muscle ache. These days when we go to bed, we have the muscle ache. Oh, I just want to lay down because my leg is aching. You know? But they didn't have any. In fact, Bible teaches that there were no feeble men among them. And yet they were murmuring. The Lord protected them. He did miracle. He provided daily bread. He kept them safe. And he gave them the clothing that they need. The shoes that they required so they can walk. But verse 2, go back to verse 2. It says, he humbled them and tested them to know their heart. God wants to do a heart examination. He humbled them by making them hungry. But while making them hungry, he was feeding them the heavenly food, manna. Some place we read, it's angel food. We read in the word of God, Elijah ate that heavenly food and walked many days, many miles without getting weak. This will keep you strong. God wants, to be, wants you to be strong. He doesn't want you to be weak. So how did they get hungry while eating? Isn't that what it says? God made them hungry. Did I say it wrong? God made them hungry while feeding them daily. Isn't that what it says? Even while they were getting fresh supply of food every morning, they were hungry. I'll give you an example how you get hungry while you are eating. Every one of you know that I go to India every, every year, probably for a month vacation. When I go there, I enjoy going. I, I cannot wait till I get to the flight from Detroit. That's my first excitement. Get onto the plane on board, I go to my vacation. When I get there, the people, family, cousins, uncles and aunts, they are waiting for me with good food on the table. Every day, Indian spicy food I eat and I spend, I go from house to house, I become fat by eating all this good food. But by the third week or fourth week, I am hungry for a hamburger and french fry. You got my point? That's what hungry means. You are not satisfied with what you have. That's what the hunger is. Are you not satisfied? That means God is making you hungry and testing your heart this morning. If you are unsatisfied with your life. That's what that means. I, I was so amazed when I saw that God fed them and they are hungry. This is what happened. You have a cloth that you, you got it. 40 years, I wanted to wear my clothes, but you will laugh because the 40 years ago, actually I came here 45 years ago, and I don't want to say how old, then you'll calculate my age. So, at that time, the, the, the style was bell-bottom pants, and men wear high heels. I had that. I had high heels through, and bell-bottom pants, and fancy dress, fancy shirt. It looked like Hawaiian shirt, it looked different than that. Those were the style at that time for men, and long hair. I'll show you one of the day, one of these days, my hair, how it looked. I looked like a hippie. I had long hair. Of course, I had hair grows every, fa every week very fast. But that was the style in the 70s. Can you walk like that today? People will make fun of you. So those people lifted their hand and said, I'll be happy if the Lord provided me 40 years of good clothing that I had originally. That means that cloth went out of style 40 years after. 
they are hungry for new clothes so this is what happen how about you in your case if you are given rice every day morning noon and evening you are eating rice and curry will you be hungry for a pizza yeah, yes absolutely mom i want a pizza today can i get a pizza today mom i'm tired of the chicken curry and the fish curry and the rice i want a hamburger you are hungry you are not satisfied with what you have i don't want to go to the other ways but you know other personal need that in your life are you hungry it's up to you god gave them what they need for 40 years that's what bible teaches not what they want so god gave them what they need this is why jesus christ taught us to pray for your daily need not for your want i'll come to that towards the end it will open our eyes god would not want them what they wanted god did not want to give them what they wanted they wanted something else after 40 years their shoes and their pants and their dress everything looked like new they did not get old bible teaches the clothes and the shoes and the dress and the pants they bought from the Somerset Mall in Cairo, Egypt. That's what they had. They bought it there and still the same. But after they came to the mall, came to the wilderness, there is no mall out there to go for shopping again. So they are just wearing that. They are hungry for the new shoes and new pants and new shirt. I, I believe none of you are hungry for new pants and even when the closet is full, you run to Somerset Mall. Why? Hungry for something else. I was telling Olivia, her mask is, a, I like her designer mask that she's wearing this morning. It's a nice beautiful mask with a lot of uh, uh, beads on it. It looks so good. So we even have designer mask now. So, question is, can you wear the clothes that you bought 40 years ago? And some of you are not even 40 years old. It won't even fit. It fit for them. That's what the miracle, I'm thinking, how did it fit for them all these years? They're eating the heavenly food. And not only that, God gave them air-conditioned climate every day. In the desert, daytime it is so hot, burning hot. At night it is very cold. So what did God do? He provided them nice blanket to keep them cool. A cloud, pillar of cloud during day. Keep them cool during day. At night, a beautiful blanket, pillar of fire to keep them warm. Amen. Night and day, same thing. So bored to death. God provided what they are in need of. God wanted to see their heart. When we come to Numbers chapter 11, verse 4, 5, and 6, we see there was a mixture of, a mixture of people. Mixed multitude was there. It says, and the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lasting. When they left Egypt, some other people came with them. All on their way, somebody may have joined them. But they had a mixed multitude. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? Verse number 5. We remember the fish, which I talked about a couple of weeks ago, so I'm not going to talk much about the fish. We remember the fish which we ate in Egypt freely. You didn't have to pay for it. It was all on the government. They paid for it. And the cucumbers, the vegetable also came with it. And the fruits and the vegetable and the cheese and the milk and everything, egg and everything came with that. And the leeks, even the onions. And even, it says, even the garlic came with them. They were so happy. They remember all that. Verse 6. But now our soul is so dried up because we are so hungry for those things. There is nothing at all here besides the manna that he gave us every day. He tried to teach them, they didn't understand. He came to the form of a man and teaching the New Testament believers to pray that prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. And I hope that you pray that prayer and you are satisfied. 
there is nothing here besides our eyes this manna every day we got to go pick up every morning and if we pick up more some of them will get rotten and if we pick up more and measure it it only same nothing works here and the same scenery same scorpion and same everything out there the scenery is same nothing change we are so bored here in other words with all this provision they are dissatisfied in their heart that's what this bible teach they say oh that daily manna again. oh that chicken curry again that rice again oh mama's cooking again i'm not picking on anybody here we are all happy with mama's cooking i'm talking about the other people the other church not this church no the church out there their children complain about their mama's cooking our children never come they are so happy whatever mama make we eat i saw a sign on our uh, uh, kitchen yesterday today's breakfast is on mama no questions or no asked and everybody ate mama's cooking yesterday morning good palap and duck curry that was good mama's cooking don't think i'm picking on you i'm just saying the fact this is reality they preferred the life in egypt over what god supplied for them when the moment you start wanting more than god provide your need you are murmuring in indirectly towards god so god gave them what they wanted bible teach the book of psalm number 78 verse 29 so they did eat and were filled for he gave them their own desire in other words he gave them what they asked when you go to psalm 106 verse 15 you see something extra there and god gave them their request but sent leanness unto their soul in other words god gave them what they wanted and god gave them more than they wanted bible is so true he give you more than you ask or imagine they asked for something they got something that never imagined in their heart Bible says God send leanness into their soul leanness into their soul here means they became weak in their faith leanness means skinny or frail or small but here the meaning is they became frail in their faith they became small in their faith they cannot walk by faith anymore they walk by sight they what happened because of the lack of faith that the leanness that they that came into their life bible teaches that they did not enter into the promised land in the epistle of first corinthian chapter 10 it says these things are written for our example that we may learn something as the lord the prayer the lord taught us in matthew chapter 6 it says lord provide our need daily lord give us this day our daily bread i translate like this i i i always translate that like this in my imagination when you get up and pray lord give us this day this day our daily bread you know you need food to eat that means the lord will give you strength to get up from the bed he will help you to go to bathroom wash up get ready he will help you to put on your dress and and help you to drive your car to the office and he help you to work a good day of work come back and do that for 5 days get a paycheck and take it to the bank cash it by your bread for the daily this is where i transfer but it doesn't matter whatever that is god will meet all your need if you seek his face daily and not only that that will increase your faith so if you seek the lord only for your personal benefit you will fail when you face challenges in your life this is what happened to them they were only seeking good for their flesh i my flesh wants this the desire come from the flesh is not uh, a, always in agreement with our spirit so if you seek the lord who he is and uh, his leading in your life you will be victorious in your life when facing challenges in your life some people become your friend only because they want something all of a sudden somebody is very act like they are your close friend they know your position they know your influence they know the money you have they become your best friend after what they after they get what they want they will just slowly leave you they are not your friend anymore i hope nothing happened to you like that none of you have that experience they just come be your friend take advantage of you and leave 
That's the way some people worship Jesus Christ. If I get a good car, if I get a good job, if I have a good house, I will worship you. When you get all that, you forget about Jesus. That's the way people are. You know why? Because they are selfish. We see a lot of selfish people all over. Married couple are an example. Husband and wife. Again, I'm talking about the other people. Married couple fail to realize marriage is a covenant of love. It's not a contract. Married couple, they marry because they love so much. They meet a boy and a girl meet. They are so much in love. Nothing in this world matters. When you first know Jesus Christ, you are so much in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. This is why the Lord's uh, 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 evaluation about the seven churches in the book of Revelation, it says, one thing I have against you, the church of Ephesus, says that I have one thing against you, that you lost your first love. So, they forget that when they get married, they are making a covenant of love between them. Some marry because they know the partner can do something for them. They look at, they have a long vision. Ah, this person will take me and, uh, uh, I don't want to say it here, but I guess I have to. They marry for the visa. I'm saying that because we, are, we come from India. So if I marry this person, I get a green card, I go to America, I get a good job. After that, what happened? They marry, this is what people do. Get a green card. I'm sorry I said that, but I have to say that. Some marry because what benefit I get from that person. I know a person who just got water baptism to marry a Pentecostal lady. Just to get married. So just in the record, I went into the water. <laughs> Very important to know why you have a life partner. If the partner fails to meet their expectation, they will leave that person, look for another one. Ignoring the covenant that they made before the Lord. Bible says, whatever you bind upon the face of the earth as children of God, it is bound in heaven. The moment you make the covenant before the Lord, when you get married, it's bound in heaven. And they forget their covenant is bound in heaven forever. He will never loosen that covenant that is bound in heaven. And yet they are running after somebody else because that partner could not fulfill. Years ago, my wife and I went to a restaurant. It's a surprise to my wife. I am using that example. It's not about my wife, but we both went to eat one place. It's many years ago, many years ago in Waterford, Michigan. And we met a very nice man who is, happened to be handicapped. He's limping a little bit. He's using a, a walking stick to walk. And I saw him. He's a pleasant man. And I saw, I started making a small conversation with him. And as he was cleaning our table and taking the dishes away. And he take all the empty dishes away from our table. As he was doing that, I talked to him and I said, what happened? Why are you doing this work? And he said, uh, well, I was making a big salary. I had a high level manager position in a well-known company here in the USA, out in California. If I mention the name of the company, everybody knows. Uh, and he was a very high level person. But he enjoyed riding in the motorbike. And he didn't have to dry, uh, ride a motor, he would have a driver to take him to work and everything. But in his uh, hobby, he was dry, uh, riding a motorbike. He had a crash, he fell, and uh, he was in coma for many, many months. And he broke his leg and everything. A lot of things happened, bad things happened. When he came out, he found his wife left him. His wife was not there for him because he lost that company. Those days, the company doesn't have to hire you back. He lost his salary. He lost his position. They replaced somebody else in his position. He lost the job. He lo lost his health. He lost his ability to walk alone without the help of a, a walking stick. And his, on top of that, his wife left him. And he came here to Detroit. And he's working in a restaurant. That's when I knew that man is a very good man. And I was, my wife, and I, I don't know my wife, remember that, it's many, many years ago. And I felt so sad hearing the story because of the selfishness. When he got into an accident, when he needed her the most, she knew that this is the time to leave him. 
A lot of people are not content with what they have. Philippians chapter 4 verse 11, Paul says, Not that I speak in respect to my want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Paul is saying, I learned to be content with what I have. The key to contentment is realizing that God has given you in your present circumstances everything that you need. You will be victorious in Christ Jesus. This realization led Apostle Paul to write that we all quote and say, Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Don't forget why he wrote it. He is content with his life. Then he wrote, because I am content with my life, I know day by day I can receive the blessing from my Lord. I know that my Lord will meet all my need according to his riches and glory, not my wants. So I can say with confidence in my heart, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Can you say that this morning? Discontent people are unhappy people. When facing challenges in their life, true motive of their heart will come out as we see in the life of Israelites. What happens is if you focus on your, yourself, if you hear somebody complaining, that means that person is focusing on themselves. When you focus on yourself, you will start complaining. If a person is complaining more and more, that means a husband is complaining about her, her, uh, 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 his wife, that means his focus is on himself, not her. Same way with the wife. If the wife is complaining every day, that means she is focusing on herself. It goes every way. Every time when your focus is on you, you complain. If you, that's why we sing that song, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look fully on his wonderful face. All the things of this world will strangely grow dim. That means none of the things of this world matter if your focus is on Jesus. This is why Jesus Christ taught the New Testament believers to pray this prayer daily. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. If you ask the Lord to meet your need daily, you will not be a dissatisfied person. You will be a happy person because you know, I only get a day to live. Tomorrow we don't know. Yesterday is gone. But this day the Lord is providing for me. And when you know that, you will be happy. That means you look unto him for your need every day. Jesus gave Israel daily manna in the wilderness to keep them strong, yet they were discontent. God's plan was for their best. God gave them the angel food. God gave them the, what they need to travel through the wilderness strong, but because what they wanted, they got more than they asked for. They got leanness in their body, soul, and spirit. When you ask for more than God give and God will give you because you are keep on just like a child come to a father and complain. Daddy, daddy, I need this BMW. I need this Corvette. I need this. But just to get rid of the, uh, the pestering, you just buy them what they need, what they want, what, not what they need. At the end, it's not a blessing. So they just pestering God. We need more of that, more of that we had. God gave them all that. But because of their discontentment. So here Jesus Christ is teaching us to pray for our daily bread. Jesus wants you to focus on him for your daily need. When you focus on him, you will grow strong in your faith. You will not going to be a weak brother and sister. You don't even have to pray, Lord, increase my faith. He will increase your faith because you are depending on him. Because you are walking by faith, you will not walk by sight. We claim all the time uh, what, we, what we read in the epistle of Corinthians say, Oh, we don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. But in practicality, we walk by sight. But in faith life, if you walk by faith, you look unto him daily and say, Lord, I know you are my provider. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let Jesus meet all your need every day in your life, not your wants. Let our prayer will be like this. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. And then I like to skip the next one and go to the last line. And lead us not into temptation. In the wilderness, they tempted God and they did not enter in the promised land. Let our prayer be, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. 
Don't let me get into temptation about my wants. Let me just focus on you for my need. I know you are a God who provides. Trust Jesus. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Have faith in Jesus Christ this morning. I'm going to ask you to just stand on your feet and meditate what you heard. Just meditate on the word. May the Lord richly bless you through this word. Have you, have a, have you had a relationship with the Lord in your life? If not, this is the best moment to come to the presence of the Lord and totally surrender your life to Him because He loves the sinners. He hates sin, but He loves sinners. He loved you so much. He is calling out to you by your own name this morning. If you are hearing the echo of the Holy Spirit speak into your heart, I'm going to ask you to just surrender, totally surrender your life. God will use you in the coming days. I'll come and pray with you in a moment as the worship team is going to sing a concluding worship song. Turn your eyes upon question have you come to a total closer walk with the Lord Jesus Christ in your life the word of Lord Jesus Christ that he was teaching his disciples on how to pray if you have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ you can also pray that prayer if you have a relationship means you have a closer relationship to get to know him and when you know him and you know that he is my provider then you will look unto him and say Lord Give us this day our daily bread. He will meet your need daily. If you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal savior, I'm going to give you an opportunity. Those who are watching me, if you never accepted Jesus Christ, in your own living room or bedroom, wherever you are, maybe out in the park, just say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I know you came, die for the sinners. I know I am a sinner, so I repent of my sin. Forgive me. Wash me with the blood of Jesus and your blood is sufficient. If you said that the Lord accepted your repentance and then you pray this prayer, I'm going to help you to pray. Father, I come to your presence in the name of Jesus. I know I am a sinner. I am repenting of my sin. I am sorry for my sin. I'm coming to you knowing Jesus came to die for sinners, loving sinners, he gave his life to wash away all the sin. Wash me with the precious blood and make me whole. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you became a child of God. This moment onwards, you can pray, Lord, give me this day the daily bread. Father, we praise you. We thank you for all the brothers and sisters who heard the word. Strengthen them, O oh Father, especially those who accepted Jesus Christ as their personal savior. I pray a special blessing upon them. Keep them strong, O Lord. I pray that they may be strong in the Lord in the coming days and they will be able to look unto you for their, their daily need. And I praise you and I thank you that this morning you have spoken to us through your word. And I praise you and I thank you that you gave us a heart of hearing. And I bless everyone who heard the word in the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May the love of God the Father the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, communion of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forever. 
Amen and Amen. You may be seated for a moment. 